Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Misty Moss here of Moss Photography. And today I wanted to talk to you about something a little bit more business orientated. A lot of people have been asking for business videos and business tutorials on how to run your own boudoir business. Um, but this time I thought I would make a video for more umbrella creative entrepreneurs. So this definitely applies if you're a boudoir photographer or a photographer, but also if you're just like any genre of artist or creative entrepreneur. And today we're gonna be talking about how to plan for your best year and how to structure for success in your business. So. Let's do it! So I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Being your own boss who is in charge of marketing, scheduling, client acquisition, leads, management, operations, ah, everything, it's a lot of work and it's really stressful and it's not a piece of cake. So it does get easier with time, but there's definitely ways to make it easier and systems to implement and put into place to really support you and help you so you can focus on the creativity side of things and the art side of things, which is kind of why we all get into this business in the first place most of the time. So what systems can you put in place to help better support you and your business to make it a little bit more fun and a little bit easier to run your own damn business because that shit is hard. Before I put these systems in place, I was basically like just running on fumes. I was burnt out a lot of the time, which is not a good place to be running your business from. You want to be running your business from a place of abundance and overflow and you want your cup to be full so you can offer your clients all of that amazing overfill and help support them better and give them a better client experience. Okay, so there's so many things I can talk about, but I'm gonna keep it really short and brief because I'll probably make more videos like this. So I'm just gonna stick to five ways to help build your business for success for the upcoming year. And even if it's not the end of a calendar year, you can implement these systems whenever at any time during the year. So, okay, so number one, starting place, where you need to begin, what you need to do before you even start doing the rest of the system setting is make goals. So I think we do a lot of goal setting at the beginning of the year, your new year's resolutions and blah, 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 all of that kind of stuff. But these goals are more tangible. So I want you to just like grab a journal or a scrap piece of paper or like a Google Drive document and just type out what you want to achieve in the next year. And it could be big giant dreams or it could be small, more tangible things, whatever you want. I like to break it down into financial goals business goals, like projects and stuff that I want to complete, how many clients I want to take on, anything business-wise that I want to achieve, like opening a new studio, hiring an assistant, that kind of stuff. So put that in a separate section and then you want to put down your own creative personal goals because as creatives, it's important that we also create for ourselves and not just for clients. I get stuck in that a lot, especially when I just started my business, I was always creating for other people and wasn't really creating as much for myself. So it's really important to fill your own creative cup and create just for you. So make a little section just for your own creative personal goals and then also just personal goals. So where do you wanna travel? I know traveling's not really a thing right now because it's COVID, but where do you wanna travel in the future? Um, do you wanna do any local trips? And do you wanna like do anything with your partner or do you wanna achieve anything just, just for you? So not business related. So we're gonna do financial goals, business goals, personal creative goals, and just personal goals. Yeah? So now we've got all of your goals written down into little sections. Now we're going to take that into step number two, which is organize your goals by quarter. Honestly, I avoided this tip for years because thinking of my year and quarters, I felt like was way too businessy. I was like, I'm not a business person. I don't wanna have my life like dedicated by quarters and quarterly reports. But I see the value in this now, especially over the last year of organizing and reflecting in quarters. Because a year is a long ass time and a lot can happen in a year. And I think it's easy to get distracted and fall off the bandwagon when we're trying to make these goals and stick to these goals and see them come to fruition. So if you break your year down into quarters and you separate your goals into those three little month pockets, it becomes so much easier to achieve those goals because you're breaking them down into bite-sized pieces. So what I like to do is take my biggest goal, if you have one, like some really high arching goal, if you put it down and put it at the very end of the year and like finish it by this time, November, December, whatever, 
But then you wanna break that big goal into smaller pieces so it's more tangible and then put those little goals in the rest of the quarter. So you can do little check-ins and make sure that you're getting a little milestones towards your big goal so that by the end of the year, it's not just like one concept you're trying to work towards. It's a bunch of little steps to get there. Another tip is those halfway points for that big goal or even just your little goal, make sure that you put halfway points into your calendar. So you can do little check-ins and say you wanna have that big goal done by November. You wanna have that launch done by November. So let's say by September, at the beginning of September, put an event in your calendar to check in with yourself and see where you're at with your goal so that you can either hustle harder or relax if you're ahead of the game. Number three is scheduling and thinking about your content and chunks. So instead of posting sporadically on Instagram and not really having a strategy to your content, you're gonna brain dump all of your content ideas into one Google Drive folder or Google Drive document before you organize it. So similar to how we just like wrote down all of our goals and just like brain dumped everything and then we took it and we made it into more of a strategy, we're gonna do the same thing with content ideas. So you're gonna just brain dump all of the content that you have. I do this in a spreadsheet first. I just brain dump everything. But then I take this brain dump and I put it and I organize it into a yearly content strategy spreadsheet. This is brand new. I just started this spreadsheet. Um, like this year, but I think it's gonna help immensely. Um, what I do already is I have a Planoly account for Instagram, so I've always scheduled my content for Instagram, but now that I'm on YouTube and I'm on Patreon this year, I really wanna make sure that I am giving my followers and my audience really valuable content that's going to engage them and sustain them and nurture them. So I don't lose track of all these platforms that I am on. I have started the spreadsheet so I can organize and just stay focused and make sure that I'm delivering content that is engaging and all that fun stuff. So brain dump your content ideas. You can stop here if you want to and then you can just pull ideas when you need them or you can organize and strategize your entire year of content or just like a few months in advance, I think would be nice just as long as you're thinking ahead. And then you're gonna stay ahead of the game, ahead of yourself, and also you're gonna spend way less time on social media just like thinking about what to post, which I also think is a really important thing to do. Give yourself some space from the social media trap. So that's number three, brain dump, organize. Number four, this one changed my entire business like it just changed my entire business. Since I started doing this, I have increased my sales exponentially. I have increased the quality of a service that I provide to my clients and my ability to connect deeper with my clients. Um, and this one is just set systems and automate anything that you can. It seems kind of counterintuitive that I'm giving my clients a deeper experience by automating my experience, but I have had so much positive feedback on just how organized and seamless the whole experience is. And they still know that you're there to answer personal one-on-one -on -one questions. But if you can automate everything and streamline everything so every client is getting this really perfectly curated experience, it just it saves you so much time and it also just makes the experience so much better for your clients. So the biggest thing I did that I automated was I implemented a scheduling system that my clients can schedule themselves. So I would shoot just whatever days I wanted to <laughs> and whatever days my clients are free. But this year, I only shoot on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and usually only two of those. So I usually try to only do a Wednesday or a Friday, and then always Saturdays, just because people love shooting on weekends. And then I don't shoot any other day. Like, those are the days that I shoot. I shoot one client for those days. That's it. Um, so I have a calendar. I use 17 hats. None of this stuff is sponsored, by the way. These are just the systems and the platforms that I use and I love. Um, 17 Hats is fantastic, I highly recommend it. It allows you to create a calendar that you can send to your clients that they can just open up and schedule themselves in automatically. And then once they've scheduled and picked their date, you can set up automatic email templates to send them the information for their deposit. You can even have them send it so that it, they have to pay the deposit themselves through the online system and you don't even have to organize getting the money from them. It just does it online automatically and then all of a sudden you have money in your bank account and your client is booked. And then from there, you can even have it generate contracts and like a pre-shoot guide or whatever you need to send them to organize and get them prepared for the service that you're providing them. It does it automatically. I don't understand why people aren't doing this. It's so amazing. It has saved up so much mental space in my head and so much time. 
before it was like, oh, when are you free? I'm free this day, this day, this day. And like coordinating calendars and then from there having to like manually send them deposit information and contracts and oh my God, it just does it. You guys, just automate your systems. It's so fantastic. Please, 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 please automate. It's so good. Okay. I'm really passionate about automating your systems, apparently. Okay, number five. And this one's for fun. I really think this one's really important. If you've read The Artist's Way, then you know the importance of artist dates. Number five is schedule artist dates alone with yourself. If you're a business person or a creative entrepreneur in charge of your own legacy and business, you know how busy you get. Life gets insane. There's so many things to do. There's so many to-do lists and tasks and clients to manage and stuff. Oh my God, it's so much. So take out your calendar once a month, once a month, once a month. Put it into your calendar, an artist date with yourself. It can be anything. You can just go for a walk. But I encourage you to try to like step outside the box, do something that you really love to do and that really fills your cup and feeds your soul. And maybe it can be creating something. Maybe it's just a day where you paint something just for yourself that you've really wanted to be painting for a long time. Maybe it's going for a big hike that you've always wanted to go for. I think we get so lost in the business and running the systems that we forget that we need to be creative just for the sake of creating. We need to play and make art and fart around and just do what we wanna do. So set it in your calendar once a month minimum. The artist's way says to do artist dates once a week. And they don't need to be as grand and big as like going on a giant road trip and taking selfies. It could be just like going to the coffee shop and people watching or going to the beach for an hour and watching the dogs or going and collecting beach glass or going to the art museum. Something that doesn't take a lot of time but is really gonna feed your soul and artist dates are supposed to be playtime. It's not supposed to be something that you need to do and it's not supposed to feel like work. So don't schedule something that you're like, oh, I should do this. No, you shouldn't do it. You, want, you should want to do it passionately. So make sure your artist dates are something that really calls to you on a personal level and that you really, really just want to do just for the sake of doing it. So those are the five things. That's how I am planning for my 2021 and how I plan most of my years to set myself up for success in my business and just creatively. So get out there, organize, set systems, automate your schedule. And I hope you guys have the best, most creative year that you've ever had. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.